This is a 2020 Old Town Autopilot 136. This platform features a fully integrated Minn Kota motor with Spotlock technology. Combine that with an open deck and incredible stability, this is one of the most efficient fishing kayaks on the market today. And the question we're gonna answer today is this. Is this fishing kayak right for you? The first half of this video is gonna be about technical specs, design and facts. Second half is gonna be more about experiences with this kayak on and off the water, rigging, battery life, issues and opinions. I'm a pro staff member of the Old Town fishing team. I was not asked by Old Town to make this video and my opinions in this video are completely based on my experiences with this kayak. So let's get started. Old Town Auto Pilot 136 is a 13 foot 6 inch long and 37 inch wide platform. Assembled hull weight of this beast is 134 pounds. The motor console weighs 24 pounds, bringing a total weight of this rig up to 158 pounds. This kayak has a usable capacity of 502 pounds. Minn Kota iPilot motor has 45 pounds of thrust. It is salt water ready and can be powered with a 12 volt lead acid or lithium battery. The kayak has an integrated battery compartment under the seat. A battery is not included, but provided battery box can fit up to a 31 group size battery. Old Town Sportsman line of kayaks come in two different colors, Amber Camo and Fortic Camo. One of the most noticeable features of the design of this kayak is the large open deck, which allows you to fish while standing up very comfortably. The whole deck is covered in non-slip EVA foam deck pads, and there are eight scupper holes for quick water drainage. The kayak features three carry handles, one at the front and two beside the seat. At the back, the carry handles are actually molded in. They are very useful in assisting you in loading or unloading the kayak in a bed of a truck or a trailer. At the front, you can find a round waterproof hatch that's six inches in diameter. The primary function of that hatch is to give you access to the inside of the hole for wiring your electronics, but you can also store some small items in there as well. There are three through-hole wiring kits and a transducer mount for your electronics. A stainless steel motor bracket is designed to quickly mount and dismount the trolling motor. The deploy cord attaches to the motor. Simply pull the cord until the motor is fully seated and the cord will stay in place by the cinching mechanism. To lift the motor, simply pull the cord to uncinch it and the motor will pop up with the help of a built-in lift assist. The motor itself connects to a pre-installed trolling motor plug. The wiring is hidden inside the hole and the battery connects underneath the seat to another trolling motor plug. The motor is primarily controlled with a remote, but the kayak can also be steered with the rudder. The rudder is deployed by a handle on the left side and can be controlled with your feet. Foot braces can be quickly adjusted across the whole deck. Steering with the rudder is not necessary but having the rudder down helps with the tracking. Rudder steering is useful when going from spot to spot at higher speeds. The kayak has molded in pockets for extra storage of small items such as tools. There are three pockets on the right and one on the left. This platform features four flash mounted rod holders. Two of them are behind the seat and two are at the front facing forward. There are two large molded in cup holders on both sides. On the right side of the seat, you can find a dry storage compartment. It's a good place to store your remote when transporting and a dry place for your phone and keys while on the water. On the left side of the seat, you can find an open area that you can utilize for extra storage. The seat itself can be adjusted to a low or high position and is secured with a buckle. Underneath the seat, you can find a dedicated area for your battery box and the plug. Also, there's another access point to the inside of the hole, and it can also be used for extra storage. Personally, I use it to store my fish finder battery. I made a custom holder to keep it from sliding. The gag features four accessory tracks, and they are 18 inches in length and are made of a composite material. Behind the seat in the tank well, you can find the console floor cover. It's useful in keeping the water out when you are not using the motor. The tank wall itself is very large and can accommodate a variety of tackle boxes and coolers. 
There are forced copper holes in the tank hole for water drainage. When not deployed, the rudder sits safely in the tank hole and is secured by included bungees. The stern of the kayak comes equipped with shallow water anchor mounting inserts for easy installation. Mint Kota iPilot motor is controlled by a Bluetooth remote and can also be controlled with your phone with an app. The motor cannot connect to a fish finder to follow contour lines, it does not have the technology to do so. The remote itself is waterproof and is powered by three AAA batteries. There's a battery status bar on the top of the screen which tells you the remote's battery status. To steer the motor you manually adjust the motor's angle. To reverse you simply turn it 180 degrees. Middle button turns the motor on and off. The remote has a dedicated spot lock, north heading and cruise control buttons. Overall, it is very easy to learn how to control the kayak. Now all of this technical information is good to know, but let's talk about my actual experience of using this kayak for a few months now. Rigging a fish finder is pretty easy, as long as the connectors fit through the pre-drilled holes. I had no issues fitting my hummingbird wires, since all tongue kayaks have been designed with hummingbird users in mind. You will likely encounter issues with other brands like Raymarine, Lorenz and possibly Garmin. Pre-drilled holes are not even one inch in diameter and you might need to modify your transducer bracket to make sure it sits as high as possible. I will link a fish finder install video down in the description. It was created by Old Town and you can see the process of installing a fish finder on this kayak. I will highly recommend you join the Old Town Sportsman group on Facebook if you have any specific rigging questions. If you decide to go with Hummingbird, you should not have any compatibility issues. My Helix 9 with Mega Side Imaging was very easy to install and so far it's been an amazing fish finder. This kayak has a lot of open storage but lacks dry storage. The rear tank hole is big enough to carry most of my tackle and gear. I purchased a dry bag for extra dry storage and I keep it in front of me on the deck. It's actually good enough for my camera gear and some clothes. I think well designed kayaks should have a good balance of stock features and the flexibility to customize them. Four accessory tracks and some space around them is solid enough for a competitive angler. Although some people feel like the rear tracks are too far behind to be useful. I use them for accessories that I don't need to constantly change or adjust. I've seen some people add additional tracks in this area. I chose to add landing gear in that area instead. The accessory tracks are made of a composite material. They seem to flex a little but they are actually strong enough for trolling and my 9 inch fish finder. There's also a lot of empty areas where you can install switches or control panels for electronics. The whole of the kayak weighs in at 134 pounds and I'd say most people won't plan on rooftop in it. Autopilot 120, the 12 foot version of this kayak is slightly lighter and shorter so it might be a little bit more manageable for somebody who wants to rooftop this kayak. You will need a pickup truck or a trailer if you want to have the best experience with this kayak. Moving this kayak around is not going to be easy, so you need some sort of a dolly. Personally, landing gear was the best option for me because of its simplicity and sturdiness. If you want to use a cart, a long wide track cart seems to be a popular choice. If you plan on trailering and using boat ramps all the time, you can probably get away without using any dollies. When this kayak is fully loaded, it's very heavy. My complete rig easily reaches over 220 pounds. My solution to this problem is to get ready very close to the ramp. To make my life easier, I move the kayak around without the motor and without the battery in it. You just need to take a couple more extra trips. But it makes the life so much easier and you're not gonna break your back. When loading this kayak into the bed of a truck or a trailer, you need to be mindful of the transducer. In my case, Hummingbird's Mega Side Imaging Transducer fits perfectly and has good clearance. With longer transducer, you may have to be a little bit more careful. Once you get this kayak on the water and turn the motor on, all the weight worries fade away. Some minor design issue you will encounter is the water in the cup holder. It has nowhere to go. This area of the deck has a slight bend in it, so it does collect a little bit of water. Overall, I would say these are not big issues and they are definitely not a deal breaker for me. Heavy kayaks are not fun to pedal. 
This one is no exception, but once you get it going, it's gonna glide through the water pretty well. Some vegetation doesn't seem to have a huge effect on its ability to paddle, but it's very hard to go through thick meadow vegetation. Being a 13 and a half foot kayak, it's not very maneuverable when pedaling, but you can use the rudder to steer it. Seeing the kayak with the rudder alone works very good when moving from spot to spot at higher speeds. But more often than not, I use course lock button to take me to the next spot. The seat of this kayak is comparable to most high-end frame seats on the market. So far, the seat has been very comfortable in my personal experience. I always keep it in higher position and I always feel safe. In vegetation, this trolling motor works a lot better than a typical propelled paddle drive simply because the motor has more power than your feet to rip through some of the vegetation. Once the motor gets wrapped up in thicker weeds, it will start shaking. At this point, you want to turn it off and clean off the weeds. Usually, the weeds won't get under the prop, but fishing line can. And just with like any pedal drive or a motor, you need to be conscious of it when fighting a fish because it can easily wrap your line around the motor. Taking the prop off on the go is easy. Included kill switch is also a prop wrench. If you are planning on taking the prop off on the water, you need to be careful not to drop any of the parts in the water. Any Old Town and probably some Encoda parts can easily be ordered through Old Town customer service, so just give them a call. The kill switch has a spare shear pin inside it. In case you break it or lose it, you have a backup. The pin is exposed to the elements, so it will likely start corroding at some point. The motor does not require regular maintenance, but it is highly recommended to rinse it after use, especially in salt water. It's also recommended to lubricate the shaft of the motor with some sort of a water-resistant lubricant. It's going to make your experience with it much smoother in the long run. So far, I have not experienced any major motor issues. The way the motor is designed, it needs to be fully seated into couplings that spin around. Sometimes the motor could be misaligned and it will sit on top of the couplings and it will not spin. Simply keep turning it one way to make it align and you will be ready to go once it pops back in. With the motor deployed, you will need 1.5 to 2 feet of depth to safely use it. Pretty much the same as any propelled pedal drive. In the case you hit the motor with underwater cover, it will pop up slightly and the kill switch will disengage and the motor will turn off to prevent prop damage. Minn Kota iPilot motor makes this platform incredibly maneuverable. The ability to stand or sit and fully control the kayak makes your fishing experience fun and efficient. The remote does not get in your way and it becomes second nature to quickly adjust your position. The size and design of the kayak makes it very stable. It is comparable to bigger native watercraft titans and it's significantly better than Hobie PA-14. Being able to keep your position with a click of one button is one of the best features of this kayak. The only time spots like my struggle is only when there is no wind or current. The stronger the wind or current, the more accurate your positioning is going to be. If you are fishing under thick metal bridges, the remote might have a difficulty in getting your accurate GPS location. Stability and the motor make this kayak great for offshore fishing. The kayak feels safe and stable in rougher water. The ability to turn the motor on and off with one button gives you the ability to ride bigger waves. When the water comes in the kayak from the front or the sides, it will drain very quickly. However, sometimes in heavy waves, the scuppers will let the water splash through them. They drain quickly, but it can get you wet. If that bothers you, I recommend you buy one-way scupper plugs that you can buy through Old Town. As expected, this kayak performs really well in open water. Minn Kota motor lets you be efficient in covering water, and you can always lock in on your spot and fish it more thoroughly. You can power this kayak with either a lead acid or a lithium battery as long as it's 12 volts. Before I got my lithium battery, I used a lead acid battery. It will get you by, but you will sacrifice some speed, range, and weight. A lead acid battery is good enough for a typical 8 hour fishing day. If you like to run around the lake back and forth, you will need to dial down your speed. 
If you're fishing or trolling motor most of the time, the lead acid battery is good enough. But of course, a lithium battery will perform much better. I installed a battery meter on my Dakota lithium battery and I am able to check up on it with my phone. This meter uses a shunt that measures current going in or out of the battery. It doesn't use voltage to calculate battery life, therefore it's the only accurate option for a lithium battery. I tested all the speed settings on the motor and here's the current draw of each setting. As you can see, a 45 pound thrust motor has a good balance of performance and efficiency. Full throttle, my speed is around 3.9 to 4.3 miles an hour. It's safe to say that I should be able to cover around 12 miles depending on conditions at full speed. At 80% speed, I should be able to extend my range to 15 to 17 miles while still staying at 3.4 to 3.7 mile an hour average. Overall, this platform is really fun to fish from. You no longer have to skip on windy days knowing that you won't burn a single calorie trying to fight the wind. Speaking of calories, this is not a kayak for exercise for obvious reasons. I think a trolley motor gives a big advantage for tournament anglers. It will be doing most of the work for you and you won't feel fatigue throughout the day. And since you're not moving that much, you might feel chilly on colder days. Also you might get sleepy on longer runs and that is why you should attach a kill switch to yourself. A few final things I want to mention are this kayak needs to be registered. So check your state laws if you need to register kayaks with the motor. Number two, there's a pretty cool way to store your measuring board out of the way on the kayak. You can keep your hog trough or a catch board on its side on the deck out of the way. And you can also lay down your measuring board right across the gunnels like so. And finally, you can lay your rods down across the whole deck. You can actually stack a bunch of rods on the deck when going under bridges, but uh, there's a spot for two right here. Is it the right kayak for you is the question you can hopefully answer after watching this video. The kayak is not perfect by any means. There is not a perfect kayak that will work for everyone. But I do know one thing, I wouldn't want to trade this kayak for anything else. So is this platform right for you? Let me know down in the comments below. See ya!